So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to welcome all to our next session titled Target Model, the New Era of the Green Energy Markets. Uh, my name is Nikos Fridas. I am a principal in the energy department of Grant Thornton Business Advisory. Target model is, of course, the transposition of the European Union's vision for a seamless and borderless internal energy market, fully competitive, transparent, liquid, and complete in all time horizons. It has taken several years of uh, fine tuning as we transited from the third energy package now to the clean energy package. But where it has been implemented successfully, it has led to substantial social welfare optimization, convergence of of prices and clearly through competition uh, reduction of prices. Now, the implementation of the target model, of course, raises the challenge of having markets fit for renewables and other clean technologies like uh, energy storage or other flexible technologies. As the second pillar of the European Union's energy policy is, of course, about, as we have heard, uh, sustainability and the Green Deal. But also, conversely, the question of the regulatory framework, the appropriate regulatory framework, catalyzing the entrance of those technologies, renewables and other clean technologies, as level playing field players into uh, competitive markets. In particular, in Greece, we are currently standing at the long-awaited threshold of an imminent implementation of the target model, uh, long-awaited, but finally scheduled to start operations on the 1st of November. So in our session today, we have uh, a panel of five distinguished speakers. Really, we couldn't select a better group of, a more appropriate group of speakers to discuss about the implementation of markets and lessons learned in Southeast Europe. We have speakers from Romania, who was an early leader on implementing a competitive market. We have speakers from the Serbian Power Exchange, the Bulgarian Power Exchange, and the Hellenic Energy Exchange. And I will present the speaker as I will call them to uh, make their presentations, I'll call them to the floor. So with not much further ado, I would like to call Professor George Ioannou, who is uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the Energy Exchange Group in Greece and of course, uh, who is the man who at the moment has all the lights and all the gazes of the energy sector turned upon him, as I said, with the imminent start of the operations of the Greek power exchange. Oh, well, uh, Nico, thank you very much uh, for this introduction. I don't feel the heat of all the lights that are on me concerning the this uh, transition that is due to take place because uh, I strongly believe that at the Hellenic Energy Exchange we are ready for this, uh, for this adjustment, ready for this uh, step forward. And as the title of my presentation uh, mentions, it's a transition that uh, is long awaited, but finally it is uh, indeed here. Uh, let me start by giving you a few words about uh, the company, uh, the Energy Exchange, which is uh, the newest uh, exchange in the area and has uh, been established uh, a little bit more than two years ago. And uh, it consists of two uh, companies. One is the Hellenic Energy Exchange, uh, which, is, which has the mandate to 
implement uh, the spot and derivative uh, energy derivatives energy market and an 100% subsidiary of uh, Hennex, which is Hennex Clear. It's a clearing house that uh, 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 has the mandate to clear uh, the spot uh, markets. Uh, from the beginning of the establishment of uh, the exchange, the goal was to involve the private sector as much as possible, and not all private sector, but actually exchanges that have the know-how, like the Athens Stock Exchange and the Cyprus Stock Exchange, as well as international organizations that support such endeavors as the EBRD, the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, and definitely include the TSOs, electricity TSO and the natural gas uh, TSO, as well as uh, the uh, the res uh, uh, manager uh, uh, and uh, the, the one that handles the guarantees uh, of origin. Uh, this combines the public sector with the private sector in the best possible uh, way. Now, what is the mandate of uh, uh, our group is to provide a one-stop shop for all the energy-related uh, products at the market level. So in electricity, both the sport market and the derivatives market. For gas, the sport and the derivatives as well. And uh, in the future, the environmental uh, component of the green, uh, the green uh, certificates. At this point, we focused on electricity and gas is about to come. Now, the target model is, uh, for those of you in the electricity sector, of course, this is something that you have seen many, many times, but just let me give a brief uh, description of my understanding of, uh, of uh, the sequence of events in the, uh, in the target model. Everything starts at the derivatives uh, level where we do the long-term planning in order to hedge against the variability of uh, the prices and uh, in order to guarantee that we are not affected by large variances that will come uh, uh, in, the, in the future. Uh, so this is something that comes at the long-term planning level. The core of the target model is the dam, the day ahead uh, market, uh, which where the majority of the transactions take place. And this is the basic engine that couples all the resources, all the producers, all the traders in order to define the profile of what is going to happen tomorrow in terms of electricity transactions. However, as the model becomes much more flexible and requires flexibility because of the introduction on rest, etc., we need an additional component. That component is the intraday market. And the intraday market allows a lot of uh, adjustments in order to, to be closer to the forecast and to the actual implementation. And the final component is the balancing market, energy, capacity, and actual settlement of all uh, imbalances. Now, we at the Energy Exchange, we deal with the derivatives, the dam, and the intraday, while the balancing market is uh, done by the TSO, is performed by the TSO. In terms of the business model that we have adopted, you can see here a matrix representation of our different markets, the spot market and the derivatives market, as well as uh, these are the verticals, as well as at the horizontal level, our functions, uh, the trading, uh, risk management, and uh, the technical uh, level and operational uh, support uh, uh, systems. As you can see, we run the majority of the components in this uh, matrix. However, you see the TSO at the, at the balancing area and ethics clear at the derivatives level. The reason is that we require a clearinghouse that is a mere compliant in order to perform properly these, uh, the transactions at the derivative, the clearing of the transactions at the derivatives uh, uh, level. Now, uh, we are the central hub of all 
the operations, all the transactions that relate to the target model. And we believe that up to this point, we have been still confident to all the participants, which will be the, let's say, the, the customers in this new endeavor. Uh, the market procedure is embedded within the actual philosophy of a company, an exchange, a power exchange, and uh, it gives real, actual, true signals to all market participants. During the last few weeks, I would say, there is a focus, a discussion on market monitoring, and I want to underline that within our group, within Hennex and the Hennex group, the market monitoring procedure is part of what we do, even if this is something that the regulator is supposed to perform. We will be there to support it. We will be there to implement any KPI procedure monitoring that is necessary in order to instill more confidence and belief in the market. Of course, we are compliant with EU regulators, regulation and standards. And I want to stress again that we will be the place where you will get signals concerning prices, concerning volumes, concerning ups and downs, concerning variances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, in this slide, you see the evolution of uh, prices, uh, volumes, and participants in our current market. Our current market is the DAS. They had uh, scheduled. Um, uh, it has been here for many, many years. It's a robust. Uh, approach, uh, but focus is more on the scheduling of large power generation plants rather on infusing flexibility into the system and allowing for adjustments. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty constant uh, evolution of uh, the volume, about 55 uh, terawatt hours for many, many years along that line, while the price is, is also nearly constant with a small trend towards increasing uh, the, in the last uh, few years. And the number of participants has constantly increased and we expect it to increase in the future. And let me state that all the participants of the dust market will be operating, will be playing in the new uh, arena of the target model. As you know, most of you, we, during the last uh, few, week, few months, we are, uh, we are running tests on the new system. And uh, this is an, a slide that uh, compares the results of our dry runs, uh, the outcome of the pricing from the dam, the day head market, versus the evolution of dam, which is the dash of the day head schedule, which will continue to operate until the transition in November uh, uh, on November uh, 1st. And what we see in this graph, it's something that is positive because basically we see a, that the dam price closely following does. And at this point, this is something that is expected and that is something that gives us confidence that we should go ahead and provide the transition. I don't want to say a lot about the market uh, platform, but uh, it was a, a conscious decision at the establishment of, uh, of uh, the energy exchange to have a custom platform, which is developed by the Athens uh, Stock Exchange who has a, who, who, that has a very strong information technology group and has developed the systems of the Athens Stock Exchange as well as exchanges uh, abroad. And uh, we have provided APIs through this uh, system to all the participants. And this is, uh, this is highly commented, uh, positively commented by all the participants because it allows the smooth uh, uh, integration with their internal systems uh, and uh, all the transactional level systems that they have in their enterprises. Now, the target model uh, will have benefits. A lot of benefits for, uh, for all the participants, for uh, the prices, for the volumes, for the final results. Uh, the dam, especially, is where 
the bulk of the transactions take place and the model we have adopted in Greece is that all transactions, even notices, even uh, everything has to go through them. Uh, so this uh, will, will provide the necessary liquidity in order to properly define the optimal prices at the daily level. Furthermore, through the implementation of the target model, we will take away the barriers of explicit trading in, the, in interconnections. And uh, through the algorithm of Euphemia, we will have the final results, the allocation, and also the implicit trading, the implicit trading at the interconnection levels. And the dam also provides multiple types of orders that can accommodate all the different needs of all the participants. Let me state again that the target model is not focused only on the scheduling of the large plants, but allows the rest to be part actual big players of the new electricity marketplace especially through the intraday market at the intraday uh, market of course um, we have a lot of benefits the participants can modify their position adjust their positions we expect a volume of about five to ten percent uh, of them to be uh, the playing field of the intraday market. Uh, and uh, again, underline that this will be important for us, uh, us aggregators, because uh, we know the sensitivity to changes in weather, and this will help them make adjustments at the daily level. Uh, the implementation will have two phases. In the first phases, we have only leaders, lead local intraday auctions. In the second phase, we have CRIDAS, and uh, in the future, we will see the implementation of the continuous trading platform of XBID. Of course, for the derivative markets, I think, as I said that, it's very important concerning hedging, concerning protection for demand, for pricing fluctuations, and uh, also for proper uh, planning for, uh, for the future. And it's a very, very important tool for, uh, for our uh, market, although it has not been successful to date, we have the promise from all participants that it will be something that they will use, they will exploit when the target model is in place. Now, the, currently, the derivative market is operational. It was the first thing that uh, opened up uh, uh, in terms of the new developments. Uh, it started... Uh, Unfortunately, on March 23rd, which was the day of the first lockdown, uh, that's why we were not very, very lucky and we have not seen many transactions. But uh, now, in November, when we will have uh, uh, the target model in place, uh, we will have more products, more offerings, uh, the proper underlying market, which will be the dam, now it's DAS, and everything will work uh, the best possible way. How am I doing with time? Okay. Four more minutes. All right. Now, one slide that I believe uh, it's extremely important because the whole idea of the target model was a pan-European electricity market. Unfortunately, at the beginning, we will implement the target model locally, only for Greece. The future is the interconnections, the interconnections with Italy, the interconnection with Bulgaria, the interconnections with other countries, surrounding countries, and definitely what we expect is the large connection with Cyprus and Israel or Egypt in the future. What I want you to remember from that slide is, uh, and since uh, our friend from Bulgaria is here as well, is that uh, there's a decision to increase the capacity with Bulgaria in the future, and that will bring much more liquidity into both electricity transaction systems, and the interconnection with Italy will give us the opportunity to operate coupled with the remaining of Europe. And as Nico said, this was the goal from the beginning 
of uh, the people that introduced the target model, unfortunately will be the last ones to see and reap the benefits of this, uh, of this uh, interaction. That's what uh, you can see in this slide. We will start at uh, isolated mode. Then we will have uh, end of uh, the year, the coupling with uh, Italy. And uh, in 2021, the coupling with uh, Bulgaria. And we will exploit the small uh, interconnections with uh, North Macedonia, with uh, Albania, Turkey, uh, and hopefully all this will evolve into a local hub, a local uh, at attraction point for uh, an integration of the electricity market at uh, the southeast uh, corridor of uh, Europe. Uh, one of our goals a project that we have started and we're working on is the establishment of a gas spot market. Uh, we are in coordination, in cooperation with uh, the VESFA, the gas uh, TSO, the natural gas TSO. And uh, we will build this again internally using the systems of the Athens uh, Stock Exchange with the appropriate uh, adjustments. And uh, within 2021, we will have it uh, operational and hopefully we can introduce derivatives on that market as well. And I want to conclude by giving you some uh, uh, dates. 1st of November 2020 will be the transition date for the target model. Spot markets, dam and intraday, and the adjustment of the derivative markets will take place on November 1st. Now, the coupling with the Italian border, as I said, it will be end of uh, 2020. We are looking forward to that, uh, that, uh, that link as well. We will feel more uh, Europeans when this uh, happens. And in 2021, uh, the continuous trading and CRIDAS uh, will take place. Of course, the connection with uh, Bulgaria, uh, the IDA, Pan European auctions in 2021, and gas trading platforms. Well, uh, a lot of things have happened in 2020. A lot of things will happen in 2021. Uh, as we all know, this uh, the last few years are years of energy, and uh, we're looking forward to the challenges uh, uh, of the future. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nico, and I hope uh, I stayed within uh, the timelines, although as a professor, usually <laughs> I like to talk uh, a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ioannou, for this extremely comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, one draws confidence that uh, all the preparations for the actual starting of operations of the Greek power exchange, the long awaited, as I said, uh, uh, start of operations have been taken um, and uh, we're looking confident to smooth operation of the market and hopefully, of course, the Hellenic Energy Exchange through its operation with the participation of new players, new products will uh, contribute to Greece losing the unenviable title of being the most expensive wholesale market in the European Union. Uh, before calling for our next speaker, I would like to remind to all the audience that you could send through email questions because we hopefully will have a few minutes at the end of the presentations for Q&A. Yes. And um, so let me now call uh, Mr. Konstantin Konstantinov, the Chief Executive Officer of the Independent Bulgarian Energy Exchange. Uh, Mr. Konstantinov had a long and distinguished career in the energy sector with previous uh, director positions in trading organization and in the National Electricity Company of Bulgaria, NEC. 
yeah. Kostandinov. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Nico, for this lovely uh, presentation and for the opportunity to be here in the lovely town of Athens physically. I also would like to, to thank uh, George for a very good beginning uh, and uh, I'll try just uh, to add uh, some data uh, uh, according to his presentation. Uh, a few words about uh, IBEX. Uh, actually, the Bulgarian power uh, exchange operator was established in 2014 and uh, from the beginning of uh, 2018, it is 100% uh, owned by the Bulgarian Stock Exchange. Uh, actually, the Bulgarian Stock Exchange, uh, uh, more than 50% of its shares uh, uh, are controlled by the Ministry of Finance of Bulgaria. So IBEX actually is a state-controlled company. Uh, this is not exactly the same, but uh, it is... Uh, almost a similar situation like this one in, in Greece. Uh, according to the uh, physical delivery screens that IBEX is operating, I'd like to present uh, the three of them now. Uh, uh, in the beginning, in the very beginning of uh, 2016, we run the head market segment. You can see now that we, up to now, we have uh, more than 30 terawatt hours uh, volumes traded uh, uh, through this uh, screen with more than 80 uh, active participants. Uh, later, the same year, 2016, we managed to, to run another separate independent platform together with the Trayport company for bilateral long-term uh, contracts, also with, uh, with physical deliveries. Uh, one and a half year later, uh, we run <coughs> the intraday uh, screen, uh, which we managed to couple with Romania uh, more, uh, in the end of 2019. Uh, and uh, currently it is working in coupling uh, mode on the Bulgaria-Romanian border. Uh, more than a year ago, we, we signed a contract with, uh, with the German uh, electricity exchange called uh, EEX. And uh, since there, uh, Bulgarian power financial futures are presented uh, there, which, uh, which is cleared according to the IBEX, they had a clearing price. So actually, IBEX is running uh, these three physical, with physical delivery screens. And uh, in cooperation with EX, we have uh, financial products. Uh, as uh, George said, uh, the, the most important uh, segment uh, uh, having in mind the spot exchange markets are the day head market. And uh, I think uh, one of the important uh, parameters of each exchange, of each exchange is, is the trust, the member trust and the transparency. You can see here that uh, uh, under the head, we have more than 80 uh, participants. I think 90% uh, from them are pretty active on the, on the uh, daily they had uh, uh, auction sessions. The second uh, very important thing uh, for each uh, exchange is the liquidity, the volumes that, uh, that, are, uh, that are traded uh, through the platform of uh, the DEHAT market. Uh, since the 1st of July this year, uh, we managed to, to trade through IBEX DEHAT more than 50% from the total consumption of, uh, of Bulgaria, which, which is very, very good parameter, I think. Uh, According to the volumes, the, the most uh, important thing here, I think, is the coupling uh, projects uh, that I'd like to focus your attention. Uh, as you can see, uh, Bulgaria and Greece are uh, full members of uh, single day head coupling area. This is the formal MRC area. But unfortunately, both countries are geographically isolated from this area according to the uh, this 4 mmc uh, coupling project, uh, including Romania, Hungary, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia. Uh, probably many of you know that we have a news from the last week where uh, the European Commission 
uh, namely uh, DG Energy uh, announced that uh, they have decided that finally will save the so-called interim coupling project according to which uh, these four countries for the for MMC will be coupled with the MRC area. This is very important uh, actually for Greece and Bulgaria because uh, once this ICP project uh, is uh, uh, started, uh, Bulgaria, Greek, Bulgarian, Romanian border on the DEHET uh, level will be coupled in maximum three months after that. Uh, the southern uh, border between uh, Bulgaria and Greek is also uh, uh, also uh, during a running project. Uh, we um, included ourselves in the so-called Italian border working table project and uh, actually are waiting for our friends from Henex uh, to, to run the, uh, the, the head market. I strongly believe that the 1st of November will be the real go live date. Uh, this is uh, uh, the situation for the head market coupling project. The intraday coupling projects are also very interesting. Uh, you can see here the first uh, wa wave uh, in blue, uh, the second wave uh, in green. We managed to couple, as I told, uh, I told you in the beginning, to couple the Bulgarian-Romanian border. And the interesting thing here is that the liquidity uh, in the Bulgarian IDM was increased up to 15 times after this uh, coupling uh, go live during November last year. So the coupling, coupling is very important uh, for, the, for the liquidity, for the market trust and for the prices. Actually, uh, we are all together in one boat here, all the NIMOs, the TSOs, the national regulatory authorities, together with the market participants, and we have to do our best to make this coupling uh, success projects. Actually, in the coupling modes, all the market participants, I mean the traders, of course, they are most, they are most active, but uh, also the producers and the end consumers will have um, access to, to the all offers all over Europe and uh, actually uh, this will make their activity much more efficient. Waiting forward for the, for the questions uh, and for the discussion. Thank you very much for our kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Konstantinov, for uh, I'll leave the, pointer here. the excellent presentation of the market operations in Bulgaria and of course uh, also your uh, message of good news for the market coupling yeah. uh, it seems that uh, we will have the MRC fully fully in operation across Europe in uh, 2022 as, as you say in 20 uh, by the end of 2020 we will have the coupling of Italy with Greece 2021 um, Greece Bulgaria and then through the four MMC region to the full full plan of full Europe. Uh, yeah, actually, we are waiting for the four MMC to be coupled with uh, ESDAC until April next year, yeah. according to the guidance of the DG Energy. This is great news. This is great news. It, uh, of course, we don't have here representatives of the TSOs, but I'm sure you you work in harmony with them to to uh, implement the the full market coupling, which is. Uh, actually the holy grail of the target model and uh, uh, leads to the full utilization of the exactly. interconnection capacities and the convergence of market prices. Um, in the program, our next uh, distinguished speaker is, is Mr. Milos Mladenovic, the managing director of the Southeast Europe Power Exchange based in Belgrade. Um, Mr. Blavenovic, Mr. Mladenovic had a, a, a meeting, actually, an urgent meeting. I don't know if he's uh, ready to join us. He's not yet, right. So let me then continue with our program. Um, I will pass the floor then 
to Mr. Septimiu Rusu, who is from Romania. Uh, he's the development manager from the Romanian Commodities Exchange. Uh, he has a long knowledge of the operations of the energy market in Romania, who, as I mentioned before, was an early leader, was the first truly competitive market in all of Southeastern Europe. So it will be a pleasure to hear from him the lessons learned and what is the future holding for the Romanian uh, electricity market within, of course, the wider internal European internal energy market context. Mr. Russo, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the presentation. Right. Yeah. Very well. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be invited at, uh, here and share new ideas with uh, with other participants in uh, in the region. We believe it's a good opportunity to uh, know each other and share ideas. In the in the same, uh, let's say. Uh, discussion team uh, i also presented uh, i want to present to you some facts about the company that i work with and some uh, potential uh, potential uh, synergies that we might have with uh, regional participants of course uh, uh, the presentations that were before were uh, strongly related to the uh, power uh, and uh, and uh, we are, uh, let's say, the leader in uh, Romania for the for the gas market. So uh, just to sum it up, I will uh, go through the presentation and uh, will be happy to participate in the in a further discussion later on. So a few words about the Romanian Commodity Exchange. Uh, it is a. Uh, uh, it is built as a general commodity with uh, over 20 years of experience. It, uh, it's uh, strongly active in the, in the last couple of years in the natural gas. And uh, it's, uh, it's moving to the electricity sector also because the discussion was about uh, electricity. Uh, the other operator in Romania is Opcom which is uh, the, the operator of the spot and uh, uh, some of the uh, forward market uh, products. But moving back to our company, uh, just going through the, uh, to the facts that we are now, uh, Romanian Commodity Exchange uh, is uh, constantly developing new products in the last years and uh, it's uh, opening the way into uh, uh, participating to the to the uh, uh, financial markets also it's currently strongly active on the uh, physical delivery products on the gas on the gas market how uh, how does the panel of products look for us uh, the focus is on the energy uh, with the natural gas uh, being the leader, we have uh, uh, currently under transaction a lot of contracts in the forward segment. Uh, they are uh, different kind of products. Some of them are standard, some of them are flexible with options. We also have implemented since last year uh, internal clearing, uh, internal clearing house for uh, clearing uh, part of the market. So we have uh, forward with clearing and forward with uh, with um, participant contracts so OTC cleared. We have launched last year the spot market, which is also day and intraday. And uh, we are operating for the TSO, the balancing market. The retail market is also included in our set of products. And we are launching in October the, the future market, uh, which is uh, intended to be uh, placed under an OTF, so under an MIFID II license. On the electricity, uh, on the electricity uh, side, we are uh, entering uh, in the in the forward, and we hope as soon as possible on the financial financially settled products. As soon as the deregulation of the market is moving further, with the new EU regulations related to monopoly and uh, liberalization of the market. Uh, until now, we have a strong footprint 
footprint on the retail market on the electricity where i have some fly some slides later on about the the volumes we also run uh, uh, uh auctions for uh, uh eua uh on the otc and uh, have another segment of the market related to uh, other commodities like uh, agriculture petroleum and other commodities about the post trading infrastructure just a few a few words uh since we have launched the uh, internal clearing house we have uh, offered the possibility of uh, having uh, uh the uh, forward cleared internally by us as an option and in October, as we launch the future with physical delivery, uh, they are uh, all going to be uh, centralized cleared. So they will be a uh, uh, standard future. On the spot market, we are under the uh, local regulations, we uh, operate uh, uh, clearing, the clearing for the spot market. The spot market is being uh, more and more active on the gas uh, market especially since the uh since the uh new uh let's say set of uh regulations that were imposed by the government since 2018 with uh, with the uh, uh regulated prices and uh, and now uh, nowadays are uh, uh the gas release program active on active on the market so uh, a lot of participants also focused on the on the spot and increased the liquidity around one terawatts per month. A few words about the volumes on the retail, just uh, to be in uh, line with the presentation about electricity. Uh, the retail market is operated uh, mainly by our company in Romania, and the volumes are around uh, three terawatts per year. So we uh, strongly believe that this will be a uh, good opportunity uh, with the large base of customer to move uh, strongly on the wholesale market also for the electricity as the market is opening. Uh, the uh, retail and the natural whole, wholesale gas, uh, this is uh, our core business nowadays. We are uh, we are we have a lot of uh, activity since 2017 the volumes of uh, registered on our platforms were around uh, 70 terawatts per year uh, but due to a, a step back uh, caused by uh, uh, intervention of the government government on the regulation of the prices uh, in 2019 we had to uh, rearrange our business in order to accommodate this uh, impact uh which uh it's dissipating uh, nowadays because the uh, the imposement by the government on the regulated price for the gas uh, is uh, now uh, forgotten about the uh, number of participants we have around 85 uh, suppliers uh, most of them active on the wholesale uh, forward market and the spot market four producers and uh, around uh, 400 uh, uh, corporate clients and users all the prices i have a slide in which i want to present you uh, the evolution of the prices in 2019 and uh, current year uh, as you see on the purple line you will uh, notice the uh, coupling of the price as we could say with the rest of the EU uh, evolution. Uh, the prices are uh, were moving down. The prices are uh, nominated in RON in uh, local currency, and uh, uh, nowadays are uh, around uh, let's say uh, twelve euros per per megawatt hour, depending on the on the product. The evolution of the prices continued. The the, the prices were. Uh, uh, deflated uh, in the recent months and are trying to recap in the in the last period as the winter is coming with the new contract and auctions uh, under progress currently. Uh, besides the natural gas, we have activity in the in the 
in other energy products uh, like uh, certificates and uh, a few uh, a few activity also registered on uh, on OTC trading on uh, petroleum products. What is more interesting uh, from my point of view related to our discussions here are uh, the possible synergies that we uh, we might uh, consider in order to increase uh, let's say the benefits on uh, the regional uh, level we see it now uh, that uh, being a lot of activity on different exchanges uh, probably a good uh, a good step further will be to integrate this activity integration is uh, is uh, it's a it's a part of our evolution we'll uh, have to see how it evolves however we consider at least from the clearing part some uh, margining effects in case uh, the the products could be uh, uh, centralized clearing at a regional level uh, the share of the product between platform it's also another uh, uh, good uh, good opportunity for uh, participants on uh, different hubs uh, the regional index for gas and why not the power could be a could be a good option uh, to develop. We see increased liquidity at the overall level in case of uh, merging of the markets on uh, in different scenarios. Uh, the price discovery mechanism will be improved. Uh, uh, our uh, endeavor in the trading activity could support also the physical integration. Hedging and arbitrage products will be clearly an opportunity for uh, market participants and hubs. We consider uh, uh, the, the integration of the markets uh, on, uh, on uh, different products and exchanges uh, a beneficial uh, uh, endeavor for, uh, for all uh, stakeholders involved. And uh, of course, for the final goal in the in the drafting in the EU legislations. So uh, this will be, uh, let's say, a summary of uh, of our exchange. The presentation will be available, and in the appendix, I have some data about the uh, uh, some figures, statistical figures about the gas and the and the electricity market in Romania. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rusu, for this very interesting presentation of the market operations in Romania, who are demonstrating uh, quite satisfactory liquidity, uh, and also your uh, proposals for um, future uh, regional cooperation initiatives uh, between uh, the exchanges. Um, I would then call our next speaker, uh, who is also coming from Romania, Mr. Um, Victor Grigorescu. Mr. Grigorescu was a former Minister of Energy for Romania in the period 2015-2017, and has been also a board member of Electrica, one of the main utilities in uh, the power sector of Romania. And his presentation will be a bit more on the wider scope of EU energy policy and uh, regional integration initiatives. Uh, Mr. Grigorescu, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Nikos, for, uh, for, for this introduction and for the very interesting uh, panel presentation that we have seen, uh, that we have seen before. Um, it's not easy to speak after uh, such uh, targeted uh, approaches with regard to markets, but I hope at least I will be able to give um, a, a perspective uh, on more on the policy side and um, uh, to, to discuss a little bit how this integrates into this uh, idea of creating a regional, uh, a better uh, integrated regional market. Because, as you said at the beginning, uh, the target model is long awaited and we have discussed this at the European level um, for some time. And we have seen a lot of efforts. We have seen efforts in Greece. We have seen, as you have uh, rightly pointed out, efforts in Romania. 
in Bulgaria. And uh, what I think it's still missing from my point of view is uh, a little bit of more coordination and integration. Because at the end of the day, uh, all these efforts that we, we are going to see, with, uh, that we are seeing in Greece, the setup of an energy exchange and uh, intraday coupling, the efforts in Bulgaria and in Romania should lead sooner or later to a more integrated EU market. And I think this is importantly one aspect that is still missing and one aspect where I think we should do uh, more. More at national level, to increase cooperation be between um, market operators, to increase cooperation between our governments. And we would probably need more support from you, I think, in better align better uh, aligning uh, our uh, efforts, uh, our national efforts. Um, why do I say that? Because to me, uh, target model is just a, a, in this discussion about markets, is just a piece in the Green Deal discussion. It is clear to us, and I think this is one of the lessons learned in, the, in, for example, in the boom of the renewable energy sources uh, that we experienced in, uh, in Romania in the last decade. It is clear that we need better functioning markets in order to facilitate the introduction of new technology and especially of long-term decarbonization. Because, as you rightly pointed out, and also uh, Mr. Yono was, was, was talking about it, you need to provide investors with a signal. With a signal that there is market and there are conditions to develop uh, new uh, production capacities and replace, uh, for example, uh, fossil fuels. But especially in this region, in Greece and Romania and Bulgaria, replace, replace the coal which is a quite complicated process and it's going to take a lot of time and the uh, Green Deal alone as it is designed right now is not going to be enough. This is at least my, uh, my reading. We will need markets to align and uh, to give signal to investors, first of all. And second of all, we will certainly need markets to choose which is the best uh, technology uh, available, a technology that is not going to be viable from a technical point but is going to provide a competitive price and at the end of the day is going to provide the end consumer with an affordable price. Because I think in this region, we ask from the markets also to look at not only to the energy, to the security of electricity supply, of, of, uh, to the security of um, uh, electricity supply, but we also expect for the markets to provide the best price available and at the end of the day to uh, take care about the question of uh, affordability. So I think in this, from this point of view, uh, there is also a, a big political uh, impact, uh, emphasis on the, on the efforts of the uh, target model. And I think there are a number of things that we still have to do uh, also in this region, but uh, also I think at the Brussels level. In the region, I think um, uh, what, what is uh, in the process of uh, still developing is the question of interconnections. And this is valid also for electricity and uh, for natural gas. We will need uh, better interconnections. I, I truly hope that, uh, uh, for example, ICGB would uh, come online in the near future to uh, link uh, Greece with uh, the, the, the Greek infrastructure for LNG, for example, with the Bulgarian infrastructure and with the almost finished Brua infrastructure. The, the big uh, gas pipeline that goes to Romania. So that we will have a truly integrated, uh, for example, uh, natural gas infrastructure that would allow uh, the um, transactions not in the national markets to connect and cross-border transaction, transactions in um, a more, uh, let's say, uh, sustainable fashion. We have seen actually in Romania in the last two or three months attempts to transact, for example, to natural gas and to export natural gas uh, via Bulgaria or uh, via Hungary. Um, my understanding is, is that we are talking about tests right now, uh, but uh, I think this is just the beginning. We have seen also last, uh, I think in, in, in the last 12 months, uh, attempts to swap quantities of natural gas from Greece and to bring it to Romania. Uh, there is, uh, I, I think that those were successful, but uh, we have for the time being, some isolated examples. But I think there are still positive examples 
because I think the interest of the investors and of the market participants is there to give more uh, emphasis to the to the regional dimension. I think there is an interest on the public policy officials of the governments to better connect. And we see already an increased uh, cooperation between um, exchange operators, either in, in Greece, Romania, and Bulgaria. And I'm sure uh, these uh, efforts uh, extend uh, across the region. But again, uh, I think we are still at an early phase and our, um, our uh, approaches are uh, still suffering i think from a lack of better uh, better coordination uh, at a regional level and this is why i think we are still um, spending a lot of resources at national level and we are not taking advantage of potential regional synergies this is i think going to change we have seen that pace uh, starting uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in romania in bulgaria in greece in particular in the last two years uh, but I think still uh, we, we need to, to do more because uh, all this reform related to um, exchanges and to power exchanges is also linked, uh, as far as, at least from my point of view, to deployment of um, uh, renewable energy sources and to the general process of decarbonization. If we are going to succeed this, certainly decarbonization is going to be cheaper in this region. And I think for us in, the, in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, this question of the cost of the transition is uh, uh, really significant, and we are going to, uh, to I think, pay a better, uh, an increased cost if we are not going to strengthen this uh, regional cooperation uh, uh, dimension. Uh, one last point that I want to make, I think this regional cooperation uh, alone will not be enough, because I think we need to stress more in Brussels that um, I think more needs to be done to help this region better integrate, better integrate, first of all, renewables, better integrate between ourselves, and this push for better interconnection, physical interconnection, interconnection between exchanges, um, is going to, for sure, uh, require uh, additional financial support uh, and the better focus of the either Green Deal funds, just transition funds, or even a better coupling with um, uh, the recovery, the recovery plan. Because alone, I think uh, our efforts, our, our separate efforts, will not deliver uh, what we want to, to achieve our ambitious goals. We are already talking about potentially uh, carbon neutrality and uh, an energy union. To me, this, uh, this, this looks good on paper, but I think uh, there are still important steps to be taken important steps to be taken both at, um, at, at, at Brussels level in terms of uh, policy planning and uh, also when it comes to allocating the right resources uh, in, the, in the region. I mean, I'm really optimistic when I see this uh, interest. We have seen that uh, also uh, a lot of clients are asking uh, now, they are looking in the region to set up shop to trade um, either power or natural gas in all in all of the countries in Romania, in Bulgaria, in Greece, they are extending towards Hungary, and we see more and more integration. We have seen also from the Commission side some efforts in this region. For example, they are looking at the um, regulatory regime to align better, for example, licenses regime regime to um, allow traders to better perform integrating various markets and reduce the cost of this integration but i think this is this process is still at an early stage and uh, for sure we will benefit a lot from accelerating this space and making sure that all these efforts that are that we are seeing in greece um, in, in romania and in, in bulgaria in particular uh, are better integrated and are serving are going in the right in, in the same direction uh, this was my, uh, I mean, my. Uh, this is my take on uh, on where we are on, uh, let's say, on the regional dimension and uh, on the level of integration uh, of, of these efforts with uh, in, the, in the general framework of the Green Deal. Uh, we are certainly looking looking forward to see the next steps, especially in this period of COVID, because certainly uh, I think that COVID reinforces, and this is indeed my last point, I think COVID reinforces um, this idea 
that uh, we need to change the way we are doing things in the energy sector. Certainly, COVID reinforces the idea for uh, digitalization, reinforces the idea for the need for regional cooperation, and certainly uh, the idea of um, uh, renewable energy sources and decarbonation are strictly, strictly linked, I think, with a better response to, to this pandemic. So I think we are in the right moment. I think we have the right tool. We just need to uh, make this uh, political and technical effort to align national uh, efforts and better integrate them. And also, beside this, uh, provided adequate uh, financing uh, uh, for all this effort. And I think that the instruments are there, either that we are talking about um, connecting your facility, uh, just transition fund. We just need to make sure that these instruments are also are not overlooking the, the need of financing from, from the markets. Because if we have connected markets and competitive markets, um, not only for, for the day ahead and for the sport, but also, as we have seen uh, in previous presentation, looking strongly for derivative, derivative markets and clearinghouse, we will, have, we will be able to provide certainty to investors and uh, a more predictable environment at the end of the day will provide the value added uh, to the final consumer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grigorescu, for this excellent speech. You brought importance to some uh, concepts that um, are also very near my heart and my mind. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the importance of the price signal. Uh, if you have confidence in the market, the price signal is all one needs to operate on short term, but also plan on the long term the energy system. It is the only signal one needs to base his investment decisions and also for uh, incentive to the consumers when uh, they should consume and when they should save. All extremely important um, to make the other, the second concept, a very important concept you mentioned, uh, the cost of the energy transition to make affordable exactly the cost of energy transitions, we need fully competitive, liquid, uh, and of course, integrated markets. So those were extremely important points that you brought uh, to the discussion. And uh, the other thing is that, yes, we are a bit later catching up with the rest of Europe here in in the region, but like you, I am optimistic. I think the process will make us uh, cooperate better, trust each other better, mm -hmm. uh, reveal also another important dimension, the complementarity of the markets. Don't forget that we have markets which are hydro-based, mm -hmm. others who are more thermal-based, uh, and um, a wider integration based on the target model, based on the market coupling, will, of course, um, all over uh, the region uh, increase uh, the, the social welfare through, through, through these um, market operations. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I have been informed that uh, Mr. Mladenovic will not be able to join uh, the session because he was called in an urgent meeting. Um, I repeat, he is the managing director of CPEX, the Southeastern Europe, uh, South, Southeastern Europe Power Exchange based in Belgrade. This is a bit unfortunate because he is the only one from our group who represents a non-EU country. Um, I remind that uh, Serbia is the first and until now only the, the only country in the group of Western Balkan countries who operates um, a, a power exchange, a day ahead wholesale market. Uh, and of course, he would have brought the perspective from the Western Balkans and in particular, the process of market coupling between themselves. There are various initiatives there. Uh, I think the wider wisdom, I don't know if you disagree with me, is that the market coupling of the Western Balkans will follow the integration of the EU members' market coupling. So we will wait this to happen in 2022, and then the, the Western Balkan countries will be uh, 
operated on the market uh, coupling basis. This there are preparations, uh, and there is a lot of focus from the European Commission, but also other donors to reinforce this process. Uh, we have time for one or two questions, um, which I would like to start actually from the inverse order, um, from Mr. Grigorescu, then Mr. Russo, then Mr. Konstantinov and Professor Ioannou. Um, uh, what is your opinion about looking at the future? Uh, we have witnessed, of course, in Western Europe particularly, in markets much larger than ours, uh, we have looked, uh, we have witnessed that consolidation of power exchanges uh, operating across border and on several countries, as well as uh, in some countries, some large markets having more than one power exchange. In Central and um, Eastern Europe, of course, we see, uh, and it is thriving the operations of national power exchanges. Uh, what is your view about the longer term future? Are the national power exchanges going to continue or we are going to have consolidation? Mm -hmm. Mr. Grigorescu? Uh, I think this is, and thank you very much, I think this is a very, very interesting uh, question. It's not a question only for the companies who are operating the, um, uh, the exchanges and for the people involved in this, but I think this is a very important question also for political decision makers. And we have seen this question asked for a number of times, and I think that the answer for the time being is mixed. Uh, certainly uh, in countries like Greece and Romania, I mean, actually all of the Central and Eastern Europe, we have seen uh, attempts for, the, for each country to set up its own operations. I think it makes sense from point of view because uh, for, for a number of reasons, I think there is a lot of fear in the region concerning energy security. And I think that countries uh, looked for um, national responses that would guarantee a, a proper uh, handling of this uh, story of energy, uh, of, of uh, security of supply. This is uh, something that we have inherited, uh, you know, like long-term contracts uh, of uh, supply of natural gas and uh, long and regional or national arrangements in this in, in this question. I think this philosophy somehow uh, helped uh, build up uh, national responses and somehow um, a tendency to look uh, in, uh, in a silo, if you want. Uh, but then, of course, there is also uh, the second aspect that uh, we are moving at different paces. And as you rightly pointed out from the beginning, uh, although there is a clear synergy in the last years, we are starting from uh, from different points and different concerns um, and uh, different level of developments. I am not sure that we are going to see further consolidation in the next decade or two because uh, I think that before seeing a consolidation, I would expect to see, um, let's say, more um, regional planning in terms of uh, flows of energy. I don't think we are going to see consolidation of the markets before we see more energy or natural power or natural gas for that matter flowing between our countries um, freely. And this is why I was, I was mentioning before the question of infrastructure, because I think when we are going to have enough infrastructure that will allow a significant amount of uh, energy to flow in the region, uh, based on uh, a simple, uh, you know, like ma market mechanism, then yeah, we lost connection with Mr. Yeah. Grigorescu. Sorry, then probably we will, as as the infrastructure will allow for more uh, flows of uh, free flows of energy. Probably this question of uh, consolidation will be asked again. I have seen certain in the in, in the region some attempts at consolidation through some partnership that we see in the region. There are some uh, big players who are uh, building up partnerships uh, across the region, but um, personally, I'm not sure we're going to move uh, quickly uh, to further, uh, to, to a more consolidated framework than that. That is my take. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zorro. Mr. Russo, do you share the, the opinion of your colleague from Romania that uh, uh, for the next 10 years, we will uh, 
concentrate on making our national power exchanges more liquid and there will be no consolidation? I think there were decades, not just 10 years. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, I hope it's, I'm more optimistic because uh, my background told me that uh, cooperation is possible. For example, uh, in 2014-15, uh, I have worked with the ATEX Clear to implement uh, CCP in Romania for a derivatives market. It was possible. I mean, it was financial. Yes, it's different. It's not, uh, it's not commodity. It's not uh, uh, energy. But um, as Mr. Gionescu said, uh, the one of the problems, except the decision make makers, are it's related to the flow of. Uh, the flow of energy so not just the short-term market but probably the long-term market will need the uh, capacity in order to to be able to perform uh, let's say the market mechanism of uh, of uh, price discovery and the uh, and the uh, price signal uh, however uh, some uh, some cooperations are possible as i said in the in my ideas of the presentation I think they are possible at some levels, uh, at some levels uh, related to the products, uh, at some level related to the exchange of uh, excesses in the markets, at some level in related to the, let's say, double membership or uh, uh, rec uh, let's say transfer of uh, of. Uh, of uh, recognition of a member into uh, one market to another. These are things that I have experienced a couple of years uh, ago, and I think are feasible. Uh, uh, some uh, some of the some of the uh, let's say pieces of the puzzle can be uh, can be uh, can be attacked sooner than later. But it depends. It depends a lot of the of the interests of the of the decision makers. It depends of the of the evolution of the let's say foreign other foreign participants in the or Western players. It depends on the on the COVID or other issues that might appear. But it's possible. From my point of view, it's possible. Uh, uh, the physical part is more difficult but the exchange part is uh it's uh customable thank you and what is the view from bulgaria um in our region of course we have particularly we are looking to have particularly small power exchanges in some of the smaller countries which they are emerging uh, to have uh, also uh, um, a spot market in place so and of course, IBEX is, um, has chosen to have a cooperation with EEX. So you have already, um, <coughs> is the service power exchange uh, an alternative to consolidation through some of the established power exchanges? What, what is your view, Mr. Konstantinov? Yeah, probably yes, it is an alternative. Uh, as you said, uh, we'll have cooperation with EEX about the financial future futures product with Norpo uh, about the spot markets they had an ITM and uh, with Rayport about the physical delivery longer term deals but uh, from another point of view the uh, competition between even between the power exchanges is is a good thing of course uh, we have to have in mind that uh, we are small markets here and the volumes are not so so big as in the western part of the europe uh that's why i i'm thinking that now we have to focus ourselves on the market coupling projects and when we manage to couple and to create a common european market, probably the liquidity will be enough for everybody and uh, as victor said in 10 years we will see everywhere uh, so-called multinimo environment uh, in each uh, in each country uh, just for information uh, about the west balkan six i i thought that Miush will have the opportunity to share this but uh, we have uh, also their coupling project uh, between bulgaria serbia and croatia running uh, of course uh, it is a little bit difficult uh, because uh, the republic of serbia is not an eu member and they obviously have to make some 
law amendments. Uh, we have also good news uh, from North Macedonia, although they're not EU member. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they uh, have chosen uh, MEMO, the Macedonian market operator, as a uh, NIMU. So uh, when they manage to establish the, the head screen, it, it will be much more easier to couple with them also. So I think the near future is, is coupling and the longer term perspective is uh, so-called uh, multi-NEMO environment and uh, competition between the exchanges, which is, which is good. And uh, do you share this, uh, Professor Ioan? <laughs> well, uh, where's the different stage? Where uh, it's, uh, it's an uphill for us in order to establish the, the, the market to go to the next uh, step and see what's uh, the actual liquidity, see how all this uh, fits uh, together, how the derivative markets will evolve, uh, how the platforms will work, and uh, uh, what will be the actual result of uh, this, uh, this transition. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm the person that supports cooperation at every level. I mean, that's part of my philosophy. It may come from, an acad from my academic background, but I believe you can always find opportunities. I would agree with uh, my Bulgarian counterpart that uh, coupling is a first step towards some form of integration, but I would uh, take a lot of the points that Mr. Russo raised in his uh, presentation about uh, the potential niche components uh, that we can identify and uh, where we can indeed uh, cooperate. Uh, multiple margins across multiple uh, exchanges uh, for clearing uh, uh, purposes. I mean, that's, that's a burden for a lot of uh, the participants, especially for traders that they want to be part of all these uh, exchanges. And, uh, and um, I, I think they will, uh, opportunities will arise in the, not decade, but in the near future for some form of, uh, of uh, let's say, uh, so basic logical uh, interaction uh, at, uh, at uh, a given uh, level. Of course, there are uh, political issues. Of course, there are uh, issues related to actual financial results because the majority of these exchanges, although supported by governments, but they will be at a certain point purely uh, 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 independent companies that they have to, to thrive in their own, uh, in their own uh, world. Um, I don't see it happening next year or next two years, but uh, we should definitely find ways for uh, for uh, cooperation. I mean, the Balkans, the Southeast Europe usually it's well known for fragmentation and for uh, mm. for uh, yes. small little pieces that, uh, although we managed to come together, and we break it out again. But I think uh, in the, the reverse will happen in terms of the of uh, the power the power game, but power in terms of the way we here uh, understand power. <laughs> Uh, we have one question from the audience. Um, it is almost time to conclude, but I think this is a short question. Are there any plans, and this is a question for the three representatives of the um, exchanges, are there any plans to trade guarantees of origin in uh, your exchanges? Or this would be an activity uh, outside the energy exchange? Professor Ioanni? We would like to say it's happening, but it's not the right time it will happen in the in the future because uh, there will be a market for that definitely as as we see a lot of rest and a lot of uh, uh, coming up and a lot of uh, of this capacity building up then we will see opportunities for trading such products for industries that they want to to participate in this uh, new era of green environment, green business, which will be a huge thing in the in the years to come, but they do not have the actual green fruit footprint. So exactly. there is there is a need for that. We have to be very careful because of how we handle it, but it is within our mandate at the, at the Hellenic Energy Exchange. We will see that happening sometime in the near future. Are those also your plans in IBEX, uh, Mr. Kosaninov, yeah, exactly. to trade guarantees of origin? 
exactly the same opinion of mine as the professor swam uh, actually it's a little bit late for this because we have no market in bulgaria no no demand actually for for such a product uh, especially in bulgaria the renewable energy sources are developing very fast uh, even they are searching for longer term ppas and i think uh, uh, right after the go live date and uh, the start of production for their site uh, the market uh, for such a product will be re will be ready to be traded and in romania mr russo from uh, from our perspective uh, we still have some steps to to make in the electricity sector so um, it's not quite on the first uh, line of the agenda but for sure it would be interesting interesting related to the fact that renewables are uh, extremely developed uh, and are still uh, developing in our country okay so something to to hear good news about next year's uh, high Hopefully. conference that there are uh, steps moving towards uh, a market for guarantees of origin I think uh, our time is up. I would like to thank uh, our four distinguished speakers. I think we could not have a better overview of market operations in Southeast Europe from what we had in these uh, 90 minutes. Again, I would like to thank you all. Thank you, Nicholas. For your participation. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.